Hey everyone, welcome back to another video from A Man Talks, NRL Supercoach. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about the best captain, vice captain options and potential pods to be considering from round two. Let's get into the video. So starting off with vice captains, now a quick little note. So with Supercoach, you know, we've got vice captains and captains. Um, and there is something called the vice captain loophole. Uh, which basically gives you a chance at nailing your captaincy pick uh, two times in the week. Now, there's quite a few resources already out there that explain the vice captain loophole um, and how to best use it. So what I'll do is I'll just link it in the description, some useful articles uh, that do discuss it, and I'll just save some time here. Uh, but yeah, definitely go do check those out. I think the SC Playbook has got a really good one on their site that I've uh, used in the past. Um, and then there are also some uh, good tools and calculators to help make your uh, make the decision as to when uh, the loophole is best used so i'll link those in the description below uh, definitely do check those out but we'll start off with a few vice captain options and and it goes without saying that players that we can consider as a vice captain are also good potential to straight captain options so we'll start off with cam munster um, you know they play the first game against the eels on thursday night um, and you know the way that the storm played and the way they came out of the blocks last round against the Rabbitohs, I could fully expect you know them to do a similar performance again. They do uh, they are playing away from home, which is a bit of a downside. But you know the storm are a quality team, and the way that Cam Munster you know took the line on and was able to score that early try, you know he actually did seem a little bit quiet for the rest of the game. But that's what it, that's what it shows you. He doesn't seem to have to do a lot, and he will just rack up easy points. And so I think. Potentially, he might come more into the four in this game. And so I think given that they are playing early on on Thursday night, he then does become a good vice captain option. I mean, one caveat, I guess, to having Munster as the vice captain is that the Eels are also a pretty good team. In terms of how the Eels play against opposing 5-8, they're actually like one of the best teams in the comp. Um, there's only like five or six other teams that are better at defending against 5-8s uh, based on kind of 2020 statistics. Um, so I think that potentially does a bit, have a bit of a downside, but then... You could also make the argument that Cam Munster is probably the number one 5-8 in the comp, so it doesn't really matter who he versus. So I think he can be a bit of a punty vice-captain option because um, he, he does have that potential to go large. Unfortunately, he didn't play against the Eels any time last year, so it's hard to kind of have a metric as how he performed against them last time. Uh, next up, we've got David Fafita. I think I'm actually really... Like, I don't have Fafita in my team, but if I think if you did, he is a really good kind of potential, really high upside vice-captain play for this round. You know, he's coming up against the Broncos. You know, I think he'll really want to put in a good performance coming against his old side uh it was found out last week that he was coming off an ankle infection so that did hamper a bit of his um you know pre-match against the Warriors um and you know it didn't seem like he was that involved but he still scored 60 and I think you know if he has now a full week of prep coming against his old team playing at home as well I think he has the potential to have a really really big game potentially be getting into the hundreds um and in terms of how the Broncos actually defend edge forwards they were the third worst team in the comp at defending that position so that does bode well for someone like Fafida as you know if he's got he's got the ability to make some strong runs on the edge I think he could have really high upside and could really be a good vice captain option this round uh, Nathan Cleary next up I think he's going to be a very very commonly uh, vice captain to player given that they're playing against the Bulldogs and he would probably do you know the Panthers are probably going to do well in that game which means that Cleary is going to do well as uh, himself in terms of how the Bulldogs actually face up against halfbacks they were the fifth worst team in the comp in defending the halfback and they're going up against arguably the best halfback in the comp uh, and you know the Panthers didn't seem to miss a beat last round against the Cowboys you know they kind of just picked up where they left off from last season and so I fully expect them to run up a score the only potential downside I think is that uh, in Sydney area the weather is predict uh, predicted to be kind of wet over the weekend that does traditionally kind of lower the points uh, across games uh, and potentially limit the uh, upside of some attacking players but I, th I still think he's going to be a safe vice captain option even a potential captain option uh, I think he'll be very commonly uh, captained as well uh, and you know he's coming off a 103 point performance from the last round so you know he's got the super coach form um, and you know the Panthers have the in-game form too. Uh, next up we've got the two Rabbitohs boys Cody Walker and Latrell you know both coming up against the Sea Eagles you know seeing the Sea Eagles concede so many points uh, and with the Rabbitohs attack looking really strong as well against the Storm who have a very good defense I fully expect the Sea Eagles to concede a lot of points against the Rabbitohs and you know the way that the Rabbitohs attack with Walker and Latrell on the left I can fully expect them to be getting big scores this round. Uh, what does ha work in their favor as well is how Manly actually defended last season against their respective positions. They were the fourth uh, worst in the comp against defending 5'8 and second worst in defending the fullback position. So I think that makes Latrell a bit of a punt vice captain option who really could go big this round. It's not it's not ideal that you know your other fullback might potentially be James Tedesco who we'll touch on maybe in a little bit because um, you might want to be a good captain option. So you know 
putting the VC on the trail means you can't captain Teddy, so it is a big risk, but I think it's one that has a lot of potential upside. And he scored 117 last round against the Storm. Now coming up against the Sea Eagles, you know, he could easily go back to back and turn up in both games. So I think he, Latrell is going to be a really good vice captain option. If it weren't for, say, Teddy also competing in that fullback spot, I would probably choose Latrell over Cody Walker as my VC. But given that Teddy is there, I think Cody Walker then becomes a bit of a safer VC option. And, you know, he himself scored only, uh, you know, he scored 82 against the Storm. Uh, you know, I could easily see him racking up over 100 against the Sea Eagles. In terms of how they played against the Sea Eagles last season, Cody Walker only averaged about 50, but Latrell averaged 141. So you could argue, you know, I think that's why we, I think that's also just coming off one game. But I think that does show that Latrell has done well against that team in particular in the past. But I think Cody Walker and Latrell are very, very good VC options if you want to go in that direction. Uh, in terms of the captains, we're, due to that vice captain loophole, preferably we're going to be picking our captain who plays a bit later in the uh, in the round. Hence why I've only got the two here, and they're both from the Roosters. So James Tedesco, I'll just quickly touch on him. Do I really need to say any more? You know, he got 162 last round, came absolutely flying out of the blocks, um, and he's going up against his old side, the Tigers. Which you know, you know, it's been a, it's been a few years since he's been there, but I think that still kind of reignites a little bit of fire in the belly. You know, you always want to do you always want to do well. Um, up against your old side, same argument that you could say with David Fafita. So I think Teddy is still going to be a very, very safe captain option. I think he'll be my captain definitely. Uh, and you know, in terms of how Tigers defend against fullback, they're kind of middle of the road uh, at the eighth worst team. But with someone like Teddy, I don't really think that matters too much. Um, and I don't know if the Roosters are going to put on the points as much as they did against the Sea Eagles, given that, that, that there's that potential for wet weather. I still think, though, that Teddy is a very, very safe captain play. Luke Keery, I put here, is a bit of a punt captain option. I think, you know, he scored the 70 points last round. It looks very involved. And I think, you know, in terms of how the Tigers actually defend the uh, halfback and 5-8 position, they were for fourth worst in the comp. So, you know, that does bode well for someone like Keery. And I think, you know, he's already a pod in himself. I think if you went to captain someone like Luke Keery, that really is a big, bold pod move. You know, so if you're that kind of player and you've got him in your side, I think that really could be a player that you potentially could gain up a lot of ground that other players won't really be considering. So I think Luke Keery potentially could be a good punt captain option. But, you know, I think the safe option will be James Tedesco uh, and with vice captain, either one like Cleary, Cody Walker or Latrell. Or David Fafita if you want a bit of a punt BC option. So this next little segment I'll call the pod patrol. You know, I did say one of my kind of tips to, you know, improving your overall rank you don't want to be always just chasing pods but i do understand that having pods in your team does help you kind of differentiate yourself from the rest of the pack um, and you know if you have a good pod player who does really well uh, it really does help your ranking overall so i think it's still good to have a little bit of discussion about pods so starting off i've picked out three kind of pod forwards so the first one is luciano le lua um, you know he had a i thought he had a really good outing against the raiders he looked like a really strong runner of the ball uh, and in terms of his super coach output he scored 63 last round with 53 of that coming in base so you know pretty solid effort in 80 minutes against a pretty tough opponent um, in terms of the next three games again not super easy with the roosters the knights and the eels as the next three teams that he's going to come up against but i guess for forwards it doesn't really matter as much as who to the opponent is if anything that probably means there's going to be a lot more defensive work for him so you could argue you know his points and his base might be a little bit higher the only down that is potentially that attacking upside with his tries might not be there but I still think he's a good pot option long term uh, you know he's only owned by about eight percent of players at the moment so I think Luciano Le Lua I was really impressed with how he kind of ran the ball and how he looked in general in uh, real gameplay so I think he's a potential super coach pod option that you can consider bringing into your team next up we've got Mitch Barnett it sounds strange to say he's a bit more of an obvious pod than Le Lua given that currently he's owned by less players than Le Lua but you know he had a really, really strong game uh, last round, coming up with 105 points, and that was bolstered by his try and his goal kicking. Now, the try and the goal, kick goal kicking did account for about 50 points, I think, in that 105. So, you know, playing 80 minutes with that base of 50, again, is very similar to Le Lua. But given that he does have that goal kicking up until Ponga comes back, um, you know, I think he does have good upside. And I think he's a good pod. I mean, that 5% ownership, I fully expect to go up during the week uh, and during the next few weeks as well. Uh, the Knights draw is very favorable. So that means that goal kicking really does um, boost his overall potential. And you know, with games against the Warriors, who did have a good defense, uh, defensive effort last round against the Titans. So I wouldn't expect the tr maybe as many goal kicks as say against the Bulldogs. But with games against the Tigers and then the Dragons, I think is the key one. I think Barnett then becomes a really good pod option. And I think one that's really going to be heavily, heavily backed coming into the next few weeks. So it's kind of funny to call him a bit of a pod, given that, you know, 
I think there's been a lot of talk around him if you listen to a lot of other podcasts and uh, things. He's very heavily uh, discussed, but in actual game, he's only owned by about 5% at the moment. I would fully expect that number to increase, but yeah, I think Rich Barnett, good pot option uh, for the next few weeks. Uh, and finally, with the Fords, we've got Lindsay Collins at the Roosters. So at 411k, to be honest, he's not really someone I considered at all before the season, but he had a really good effort last round. Um, scored 63 points with about 60 of that, I think, coming all in base. Uh, and I think he played really big minutes at about 60 minutes uh, last round. I don't know if that would be the same going forward as well. I don't know if maybe last round was an exception, given that, say, Takeaho played a few less minutes than I would have expected. But I think Lindsay Collins, he seems to be... You know, he's coming off some good form. He was able to get into the State of Origin team last season, uh, and he had a really good effort in round one. So, you know, even though he's potentially might get rotated back to the bench, I think with Haru, uh, with Wira Hargraves, you know, getting up there in age, I think Lindsay Collins could actually hold down maybe that starting front row forward position. And maybe we might not be jumping on him straight away this round. It'd be good to maybe have another look and see how his minutes are for this round. But I think going forward, he could be a very, very good pod option, only owned by about 3% of the game at the moment. And at 411k, he is a little bit awkwardly priced, but, you know, say, for example, if you have Christian Walsh and you're not too happy with, uh, with his performance, you know, if you're, and you're looking to make some money out of him, you could potentially just downgrade someone like Lindsay Collins and open up 40k. Or, you know, if you've got any kind of other, got some spare cash, say, from downgrading Matt Lodge, and you want to upgrade one of your other front row forwards, you could go to someone like Lindsay Collins. So I think he's a decent pot option. In terms of the games, they've got the West Tigers, the Rabbitohs, and the Warriors in the next three. But again, as I mentioned, for forwards, I don't think it matters as much as to who the opponent is either way the Roosters are a quality side you know you can always expect them to be rolling forward and you know Lindsay Collins to be getting a lot of run meters and hit ups so I think he's a very uh, good interesting pot option to see how he goes over the next few weeks uh, in terms of the backs Luke Keery is getting a getting another mention uh super I seem to be super keen on Luke Keery guys um but I think in terms of the backs, he's one of the less owned halfback, and he does have that dual 5-8 slash halfback listing, which does come in handy down the line. You know, at 528k, a little bit on the more expensive side, you know, I think the way that the Roosters, the, fo- the form that they showed against the Sea Eagles, I've got a lot of confidence in their play, and even though some of those games in that next three are kind of tough, would say the Rabbitohs and the Warriors showing their defensive effort, I still think someone like Kiri, who looks like he's got the keys to the Roosters' attack, you know, he was fully involved in everything. I think he does have that potential to have really big upside scores, but that also does come with some low scores, which you just kind of have to, you know, factor in when you're picking him into your team. But I think at 8% owned, it's quite surprising to see him that low owned, given that uh, a lot of the time, players who are very uh, good in real life, such as Luke Keery, some that really means that their ownership gets bolstered by um, other players picking them, or based on that alone. But for Supercoach, he does have that kind of inconsistency. But I think he's a very interesting pod option. I think the way that the form that the Rooster showed, I think I've got a lot of faith in their attack, and Kiri would be a, um, a linchpin to that. So yeah, pretty interesting pod option. Uh, next up, I've got Jerome Luai. I mean, this kind of doesn't really feel like too much of a pod, given that he's kind of popular and he is discussed a lot, but he's still only owned by about 9% of the game, you know, so it's less than 10%. Um, and I think the Panthers draw and the form that they showed last round against the Cowboys, they look like their attack is still clicking on all cylinders, um, and Luai looked really good down that left side. You know, coming off a 79-point effort last round, and they've got the Bulldogs this week. Storm, yes, that is a tough game, but then they've got the Sea Eagles. So two out of those next three games are very, very favorable for the Panthers. And so someone like Jerome Luai, I think, you know, he could really go up in value over the next few weeks. Kind of regretting that I didn't go with him instead of Dylan Brown to begin the season. I still could make that Brown to Luai switch, but it does seem a bit sideways. But yeah, it doesn't really feel like a pod too much with Luai, but at 9%, I still would put him into that pod category below less than 10%. So I think Luai, very, very good pod option. Don't really have to talk about him too much. I think everyone knows that he looks like he's going to be an absolute super coach gun. Uh, and finally, we've got Joey Manu. So I think Joey Manu, I was kind of tossing up whether I wanted to put Joey Manu or Brett Morris. I just feel like a lot of the Roosters' backline don't get a lot of uh, love in terms of their ownership. You know, someone like Brett Morris, obviously he's a lot more expensive at like 630k, but he showed that that can his price tag can be justified. He's got 125 points last round. Um, and Manu, I think he scored 73 last round, and I didn't think he, he didn't get a try nor a try assist. You know, so that was, a lot of that was just coming from base and then his, his ball running, uh, ball playing, and I think um, a lot of his involvement in the attack in general. Um, and he's typically someone, I think, over the past few seasons, he's gradually been increasing his average every year. And in real life, he just seems to be getting better and better. Like, I really highly rate him as a real-life player. It just sometimes doesn't always translate into Supercoach. 
I think what does happen with Manu when if he's ever able to able to fill in at fullback ahead, um, instead of Tedesco, say if Tedesco has been rested or at Origin, Manu does seem to put up amazing numbers. I think he consistently gets into the hundred point barrier when he's playing at fullback. But he's someone Manu. I think someone to keep in the back of your mind if you want to go for a bit of a pod center option. Say for example, if you've got Brian Kelly and you need to trade him out after his injury, someone I haven't mentioned is Brian Toto, who's owned by about five percent. So he himself is a pod. Um, I think he's still getting a lot of discussion, but I feel like Manu isn't really being talked about at all. And I think, you know, he is cheaper than To'o, uh, and that's an easy downgrade from Brian Kelly to Manu. You know, and I think the Rooster draw um, long-term is pretty pretty favourable. And I think, you know, if you're willing to kind of ride those inconsistencies, I think he has that potential to give you some good 80, 90-point scores. So Manu, I think, one of those guys who I think I really rate as a real-life player and could be a very sneaky pod in your centre wing. Well, that's it guys made it to the end of the video hopefully you guys kind of like this kind of content where i talk about you know some captain vice captain and pod options do let me know in the comments below if you do like to see this instead of just kind of going through the team list um and not my you know my kind of team and my trade thoughts yeah so i would really appreciate it if you leave in the comments below like if you do like this kind of content and then i'll they'll, t they'll let me know what kind of stuff i should keep uh creating for you guys but if you did like this video please uh would really appreciate a thumbs up and a like on the uh, video um, and please do consider subscribing as I'll be continuing to put out videos throughout the 2021 Supercoach season. But until then, see you guys in the next video.